So as far as cuts of beef go, New York strip is by far my favorite cut. Okay, slightly less fatty than the ribeye, but still wonderful beefy flavor. Uh, and a New York strip steak is just gorgeous. But when I'm feeding a lot of people, I get the entire loin. It's a great way to save budgetary on feeding a lot of people, and it's a lot of fun and very simple to cook. Uh, today I wanna show you my reverse sear or English style New York strip loin. Before we get started on fabricating the beef, let's take a look at our grill setup. And notice I have some charcoal still really hot from a previous cook, uh, but it's not a lot of charcoal. So this grill's, this, this cook's gonna be, I don't know, probably an hour and 15 minutes. I just wanna, with my hand, put some uh, new charcoal into our existing charcoal. And we still wanna activate this new charcoal before we close the dome and start cooking on it. So, Oh, look at that guy. So possibly we don't choose the huge pieces of big block since we want to get rolling pretty quick here, but just some smaller chunks. And now that we've got some charcoal in there, we're gonna use our ash tool to incorporate and kind of roll that around. I'm gonna make sure that my draft door is completely open so we have maximum airflow. My dome is completely open. We're gonna sit here for about 10 minutes. We're gonna to start to see those ashes begin to ember up, okay? That charcoal to ember up, and that's when we're gonna put our dry smoking wood. Today we've chosen an oak, all right? So we wanna see some red, we wanna see some glow. Put these in, get combustion, then we'll set up for our indirect cook. Once we've reached the combustion state, then we install either our slow roller or our deflector shields, and we're using deflector shields today. We want indirect heat for the first portion of this cook. We want nice smoke, but we want to cook it nice and gently. Like most great cooks, this is all about technique. Okay, so we're letting, we've got our deflector shields in, our smoke is clearing back up again. Uh, now we're gonna take this beautiful New York strip one we got from Wooden Nickel Farms here uh, in North Carolina, and we're gonna score the fat cap. That's gonna allow the smoke to penetrate through what's left of that fat cap, as well as create more nooks and crannies for caramelization. Now that we've got it nice and scored, we're gonna start with our two seasoning method. Uh, first thing you wanna do is start with a salty seasoning. So today we've chosen Lane's Barbecue brisket seasoning. Uh, you know, it's salt, pepper, garlic. There's some other things in there, but I love the salt content here right on top. And this is a large piece of meat, so you're gonna to wanna to season a little heavier than you normally would. The second layer is gonna be our sweet heat, which I find in Spellbound, Lane's Barbecue Spellbound. Uh, that heat is gonna lock in some interesting flavor profiles. The paprika is gonna give us that nice red we're looking for, and the sweet is gonna help us build that bark as it caramelizes. Then we flip it over and do the same thing for the other side. This is a larger roast, so almost season this up if you were doing the prime rib. Remember, we're gonna slice it and have all kinds of new surface area there that's not seasoning, so go hard on the outside. Wanna hear a slight sizzle when it hits that grill. Can't even see the smoke, but I can smell it. It's burning my eyes. Smoke's acidic, that's why I start to break things down. I'm gonna shut this, we got nice blue smoke right now. Beautiful. We're stabilized at a temperature of about 350 Fahrenheit. If it's a little higher, that's okay, but really we want it 300 to 350. And look, here comes that blue smoke, wispy. You can almost, you can almost see it. All right, so we're gonna cook this for about 30 minutes and then flip it and cook it for another 30 minutes. We're driving to an internal temperature on that steak to about 115, 125. 30 minutes into this cook, let's take a look. Oh yeah. Look at how the, the dome, the energy from the dome radiated and started to caramelize this side as well. Let's go ahead and see what our, our bark looks like. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Nice sizzle effect. Now we're gonna do what I call dry basting. We're gonna take that second seasoning and put a little bit more right on top, especially in those darker spots. Continuing to build educated layers and this is all about being an active participant in your cooking process. We've got good smoke still rolling through. I'm gonna shut this dome now. 
It's one of the benefits of having a ceramic grill is that 360 radiant heat. So you saw how we got caramelization on the top. Now we're flipping that and progressing that side, getting that bullseye effect, uh, medium rare that we're looking for. So uh, I think we can go ahead and take another 30 minutes in the grill, but possibly take the temperature 20 minutes in. Remember, we're looking for that 115 to 125 internal. Let's go ahead and whip up a sauce while we're waiting. Uh, Duke's mayonnaise. We're gonna go with a little red wine vinegar. Look at that mayonnaise, jeez Louise. Uh, a little red wine vinegar for some pop, right? And something about that vinegar brings acid to the dish, which is gonna be so nice against that New York strip. And then a little heat, but not just any heat, right? Crushed red pepper brings that, uh, I don't know, how would you describe that? You know, the capsicum here, it's not as spicy, but it's like a floral heat, if that makes floral any heat, sense. I like that. Yeah, That's floral, we'll go with that. floral heat. <laughs> you do this when you say that, right? Uh, Parmesan, fresh grated Parmesan. So we're making this, uh, I think we'll call it a Parmesan red crushed pepper sauce. Right? Nailed so, it. Sounds fancy, <laughs> right? Throw garlic in there if you want. Uh, a little bit of that brisket seasoning just because we need a little, a little more salt. I'll be completely honest with you. I'm just making this up as we go. I like the sound of all this. Uh, perhaps you want to throw a little horseradish in there or a little garlic. Look, I want a little more color in there. I can tell I want a little more heat. Boom, boom, boom. I've got that. A little more cheese. And doesn't that just look delicious? Sauce-like viscosity. Check. Let's give it a taste with our little tester. The next big thing. Look at that. Um, oh man, that's great. And the Parmesan really comes through too. So we're gonna set this aside. Remember we want that 115 to 125. Take a look at the caramelization. Now we're not quite done though. And just by touching this, I can tell it's firming up nice. Let's go ahead and pull it right now. Let's pull it right now. And now we let it rest. So you know, when you're doing a reverse sear, this is the point where you let it rest. Now when you sear it again, you don't need to take it off and let it rest again, okay? We do need to take out our deflector shields, bank our charcoal, so let's go ahead and do that. Grab that ash tool and drag all the charcoal, no need to add more charcoal, but drag all that charcoal to one side. And then we're gonna reinstall, if that's a word, or install our grill grate at the lowest setting because we want to be as close to that firepower as possible. Grill grate's installed. We're going to leave this dome up. We're going to make sure that draft door is all the way open. Uh, and we're going to start really ramping up the sear side while this New York strip is resting. Uh, this looks wonderful. Now we're gonna split it. It is rested. We're gonna split it right down the middle. If it were wider, I'd cut it into thirds, but we wanna go lengthwise. Oh, ho, 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 yes. Yes, indeed. All right. Now we're gonna take some of our, some of our sauce and we're gonna paint it right on that newly revealed side. Oh, you're doing it now? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I know, it's a little different. This is a different kind of method. Uh, Oliver, if you're watching, so my buddy, the number one barbecue champion in the world, Oliver Sievis in Germany, uh, allowed me to compete with him in the World Food Championship. And uh, this is one of his methods that he shared with me. So, you know, secret. yeah, so we're gonna do a little, sorry, Oliver, had to share it with the world. We're gonna go right on top. And again, I've been doing this for a while now and having tremendous success with it. We're gonna take these two gorgeous loins and we're gonna put them sauce side down, sauce side down right onto that hot grill grain. Let's do it together. Flame kissed. Okay, watch this. You wanna see some sizzle? Yeah. I like it. It's exactly what I wanna see. Now, because we let it rest already, we do not need to let this rest again, okay? There's a lot more room for error when we're using larger steaks like this, okay? So you're worried about spending the money on a large roast versus individual steaks. Well, if you're gonna feed a lot of people or the same amount of people, it's easier to buy a larger roast and use this method than to get individual, you know, 10 to 12 ounce New York strip steaks where the margin for error is very low. Here we had a temperature swing of 115 to 125 where we still would have been okay. And then we cut it 
season it, sear it to exactly where we want it. This is a much safer bet to give everybody exactly what they want than cooking a bunch of individual steaks and sweating out here. We're cruisy, all right? We're having beverages, we're hanging out, I'm not worried about things. Taking it nice and low and slow, then letting it rest, and then you know, ramping up that one side. These are very calculated steps that we can do relaxed versus putting ourselves under the pressure of cooking the perfect 10 ounce steak, right? This style of presentation, that's pretty big, cut that in half, is my, is my, I'm, I'm gonna say it, is my most favorite. Yeah, there you go. Most it, favorite yeah, most favoritist ever. Uh, it's family style, right? Grilling takes the formality out of dining. Using larger cuts takes the fuss out of having to worry about internal temperatures all the time. Um, you know, pump the brakes. Life is short. Take it easy. Take a breather. You deserve this, okay? Uh, no fuss cooking and presentation, right? So let's give it a go. Dino Mike. Woo! There's that red pepper. Mmm. Cook with confidence. Don't be afraid of those larger cuts. Use the low and slow and fast and furious capabilities of your Kamado Joe and have fun with it. Have fun with it. Like I said, you deserve it, okay? Uh, from our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling. But wait, don't forget to do all the things. Subscribe, hit notification, hit the like button. This is sounding too much like an infomercial, all right? <laughs> like I was saying, just go out there, cook with confidence, have some fun, and do leave us a comment. From our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling.